It's time to pick a side. The border war is on the air with PG and Ten. All right, everybody, welcome to the Border War. I want to thank you for tuning in this week. Uh, we want to give a big thanks to everybody who checked out some of our old shows last week and listened to all the many ways that BG and I were wrong over the past year. Thank you for listening and downloading this past week. We didn't have a show last week. I was out of town. Uh, BG was off dealing with some personal matters. Uh, once again, there's no BG this week. He is gone. Uh, I haven't heard from him. Last I heard from him, uh, he had grown uh, quite a fierce beard. Uh, He was last seen running into the woods wearing nothing but socks and a smile, yelling about fake news. Hopefully he's out there somewhere listening. Hopefully he'll find a way to either tune in to Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcast, or tune in and check this show out. In the meantime, if you have heard that little giggle, I am joined once again by my six-year-old daughter. She decided she wanted to jump in on the show. She had some serious thoughts about the world of sport to give, so I give you the floor, child. What would you like to say before I get into a football-heavy show this week? And apparently the cat has got her tongue. Uh, This week we're going to... Talk, in case you haven't heard, the North Carolina football team has got some more drama. Uh, Will Muschamp has drugged the Gamecocks into a little bit of a a difficult situation. And the NFL preseason is up and running. Uh, A lot of big games this past week and a lot of interesting situations, particularly uh, up in Washington. Uh, But we'll get started with the North Carolina football suspensions, in case you have been under a rock for the last week or so, uh, 13 football players from the University of North Carolina have been busted for selling sneakers. Now, when I first heard about this, uh, my first thought was, well, they knew exactly what they were doing. Uh, They knew it was wrong. When they sign up to go to school, when they sign that letter of intent, they're giving up these rights. And I got into a pretty heated text text message exchange with a gentleman who, if you followed the show and been on the show, you've heard him on here before, Jonathan Hanna. And his stance was he had no problem with it. Uh, I would come back to him by saying, these guys put a buck above their team. Not just a buck a lot of bucks some of these shoes were sold for as much as twenty five hundred dollars a pair well when the argument was well a lot of these kids are taking care of their mom or their siblings or they have children that they're having to take care of and everybody is getting rich everybody's making money off this situation but them i would say if it were one or two kids one or two players that had done this okay you know, if it was one guy that that went out, sold the shoes, okay. This was one guy or two guys that had done it, and word gets out. And so now everybody else jumps in and tries to throw their hat in the ring, so to speak. They try to get theirs, and now we're sitting at 13 players facing suspensions from a game all the way up to four games. One of the one of the uh, players who was getting the games, uh, quarterback Chaz Surratt. Now, if you followed the Tar Heel season last year, Surratt was the uh, the starting quarterback. He was in a battle with the the transfer from LSU. He eventually wins the job before he goes down, and Nathan Elliott finishes the season. Now, Surratt uh, in the last year in the seven games that he started, I think. He completed a shade under 60% of his passes, eight touchdowns to three interceptions. When he goes down, Nathan Elliott comes in. He's a shade over 50%, 10 touchdowns, five picks. Look, these guys were in a battle to be the starting quarterback this year. The one thing you want from your quarterback, to me, is you want to know that he can lead his team. He can lead this group of men. Uh, 
knowing you know, these guys knew when they did this that they would eventually be caught and they would be punished when they were caught. You know, the fact that your quarterback is involved in it, you know, kind of screams to me that maybe he doesn't have the leadership qualities that we thought he did. Uh, you watch the team. They didn't have a lot of success last year as far as wins and losses, clearly. But maybe Nathan Elliott is the better better leader. Maybe he's the better choice. I don't know. Uh, to me, the team certainly seemed to respond a little better once Elliott got in there. Uh, the fact that your starting quarterback went down midway through the season and you know, you didn't lose, you know, the team didn't fold, they didn't cave in. They rallied around the backup quarterback, and now these two guys had gone into camp and were supposedly, uh, you know, they were going to battle it out and let the best man win. Now, I think Surratt was eventually going to win the job. Because, you know, he's just more talented than Nathan. Physically, he's more gifted. Uh, he's a more gifted quarterback than Elliott. But now I think the question has got to come up is, is you know, does he have the, the wherewithal? Does he have the leadership? to be the starting quarterback in North Carolina. I don't know. Uh, we talked a couple weeks ago. Uh, Surratt's going to miss the first four games. We talked a few weeks ago, and I I told you that I thought those first four games were going to be crucial to whether North Carolina got back to a bowl game this season. I, I don't think that, you know, I don't think they're extremely overly talented, but I, there's enough talent to, to at least be in a bowl conversation. And now... For a buck, a lot of bucks, you know, Chas Surratt and, and the rest of these guys, you know, some important guys on defense as well, uh, not only have they, they kind of put their greed, as I put it in our in our text message exchange, uh, above the team, but now Larry Fedora is in a tough spot. This, was a, this is going to be a make-or-break year for Larry Fedora. Like it or not, I personally uh, am a big fan of, of Fedora's but to say he's on the hot seat is an understatement. And now, because of you know, because of poor decisions by a number of guys, you know, it may ultimately end up costing Fedora his job. We'll see. Uh, one fella that his job is probably going to get cost, DJ Durkin at Maryland. Uh, you know, if you follow that situation, a tragic situation up there where they had a young man die of a heat stroke after a practice. I uh, won't get into all the details. They're all out there. But Will Muschamp had some interesting comments the other day. Uh, he's a friend of Durkin's. He coached with him at Florida. Uh, and he basically came out and blasted the report uh, about what had gone up, uh, uh, gone on up at Maryland. Uh, you know, I think it was, it, you know, it was kind of based on a quote-unquote anonymous source. And, and Muschamp had a real problem with that. Uh, now, I've got a real problem with, with the way Muschamp responded to that. Number one, uh, he's got his own work cut out for him. Uh, I don't think they're going up at Maryland. Uh, one, they're not in the same conference. They're not on your schedule. And that's got nothing to do with Will Muschamp and his program, friendship aside. Uh, but two, someone tell me where the win in commenting about that is. How does Will Muschamp comment on this or speak on this and get a win from it? And, you know, how, how does he? You know, how, how does he make that work? Because so far he hasn't. You know, when you come out and you blast the report and you blast the way that the information was gathered, you know what you're saying is, I believe I believe my friend over this report. Over a Brett McMurphy, who is a well-respected journalist in the sports world, to say the least, uh, must champ. He's got to stay out of it. I mean, it, it, if that's your friend and you want to, you want you want to defend him, you know, you call him up, you, know, you speak to him privately, you, know, you let him know. Uh, look, man, if there's anything I can do for you, et cetera, et cetera, you do the friend thing, but publicly. Will Muschamp has put himself and, frankly, the University of South Carolina in a bad spot. Uh, 
the school president, Harris Pastides, came out uh, shortly after Muschamp's comment and backed Muschamp's, you know, saying he's got a problem with anonymous sources. Look, again, same thing. I, this has nothing to do with you guys. Nothing to do with you guys whatsoever. The story here is that a young man, an athlete, should be in the prime of his life, is no longer with us. Frankly, it's probably because somewhere along the way, somebody up there at Maryland wasn't doing what they were supposed to do, wasn't checking the right boxes and watching after this young man like they should have. There's no way to sugarcoat that. There's no way to come out of that not sounding like a tool. And frankly, uh, that's exactly what Muschamp and Pastiti sounded like. Uh, to me, the biggest question in this is why is this, you know, why is this attitude so prevalent in college football? You know, because if you believe the reports, you listen to the reports. You know, there was a, a quote unquote that that catchphrase there, that toxic culture that everything likes to fall on. Anytime anybody, uh, anytime a coach is getting ready to get fired or they want a can of coach, they always go back to that toxic culture. That's created up there. To me, I, I, to me, it just begs the question: Is this, you know, or I guess I should say, why is this a college football problem? Uh, you know, you hear all the time. You hear of of college basketball coaches sometimes where where abuse, you know, quote unquote, abusing players or ver- being verbally abusive to players. Those guys get gone, man. Those guys get canned. They are out. Almost to the point of being unemployable. But for some reason, in college football, guys get placed on leave. They kind of get babied and they kind of get coddled a little bit. Urban Meyer at Ohio State. Does anybody think Urban Meyer is going to get canned? No. No, of course he's not. Of course not. And his track record is terrible. Go back to the time at Florida. You take Tim Tebow off that Florida team, and he's basically coaching like the worst group of human beings ever assembled as a football team. Tim Tebow covered up so many flaws, so many personal flaws, character flaws with those teams at Florida. It's it's ridiculous. But you go back to that, and all the way up through now, even as coaches, Urban Meyer has done a terrible job of being a good person, basically. But he's going to keep his job. He's going to keep his job because he wins football games. And if DJ Durkin won a lot of football games, he would keep his job, too. He would still have a job despite the fact that a young man died on his watch. Now, ultimately, I think that that he'll he'll get canned. And hopefully for, you know, hopefully he doesn't wind up, for Gamecock fans, he doesn't wind up down with his good friend in Columbia on that staff. Because to me, it's just a terrible look. Like I said, yeah. If you win enough in college football, it seems like you can get away with anything. And it's not like that, in my opinion, in any other college sport. You know, certainly they're not all comparable, but you look at college basketball, again, if this kind of stuff is, a, is, is alleged against you, then you are out of here. You are, schools will can you in a minute, but for some reason... Football coaches, they get to hang around. To me, it's a problem. To me, it's a big problem. You know, you're you're a college football coach has got what a hundred kids on his team, a hundred young men on his team. You're charged. You know, you you are able to touch the lives of more young men than any other coach on that on a campus. 
So you've got a you know, you've got a major responsibility here. And when you do these things and you act a certain way, when you allow certain people to infiltrate your program to work on the inside, to me you're failing that group of young men. You're sending the wrong message. And I think college football is sending the wrong message here. I think schools are sending the wrong message. That it, as long as you win, it's okay. But it's not okay. It's not okay. And hopefully, you know, on the basketball side this past year, it's been very difficult for schools. And a lot of schools have had to look themselves in the mirror and had to confront a lot of ugly truths about their sport. Hopefully, at least to, you know, at least to me, I hope that this serves as a jumping off point to where that we can come around on, on, on the football side now and start kind of cleaning up some of the mess, kind of take some things out of the closet, sweep under that rug, and start cleaning this up. Because it's a great sport. It's a great game. Football is a great game. And I hate to see it, you know, I hate to see it uh, marred by a few bad apples. On to the NFL. BG, once again, not here. But the show must go on. And for the Washington Redskins, we've talked about how he's excited about Darius Geis. Uh, As a Cowboy fan, I'm not necessarily excited to see him, but I thought that he was going to have a good year. I thought he was going to be a big part of that offense in Washington. Well, now he will be a big part of the cheerleading staff from the sidelines. He is out for the year with a torn MCL. Uh, he was going to be a, like I said, a big part of that offense. So now uh, the question becomes: Is the offense now the biggest problem in Washington? Uh, you know, recently, the last handful of years, this it's been the defense that frankly hasn't held up their end of the bargain, and and as a result of that, you look at the Redskins draft picks; they've been heavy on defense. They've gotten a lot of good players. Uh, on that side of the football, Jonathan Allen will shoot you. Know, he'll be back healthy again this year. Uh, Fabian Moreau, who was a third round draft pick last year, uh, you know they clearly like what they see from some of the young guys in the secondary because they just cut Orlando Skandrick. Uh, but you look at the the offensive side of the ball; they haven't invested much. You know they yeah, they haven't invested much in the way of draft picks. Uh, you know, Samaje P. Ryan's a fourth round pick. Uh, Rob Kelly, I, you know, Geis was going to be a guy that they were going to really depend on. And now they're back to the, the P. Ryan Kelly uh, circus. Maybe circus is the wrong word. Uh, but they, they, you know, those guys are going to uh, compete for touches now. We saw that last year. They were just okay. Uh, I, you know, out at the wide receiver position, yeah, they had. There was a time when Washington had threats at that spot. Pierre Garcon, Deshaun Jackson, they let those guys go. Now you're talking Josh Doxson, uh, injuries, uh, hasn't lived up to expectations, and uh, you know. Uh, so I, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's fair to to say that you know now without guys that. The Washington offense is, is going to be uh, going to be in big trouble. You know, I I think uh, Alex Smith is. You know, we've talked about Alex Smith's going to be a good pickup. You know, he he's going to do an adequate job. But I mean, let's face it, he just doesn't have the same weapons that he had in Kansas City. When you're talking Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill, and so now if you're a Redskins fan, where one week into the preseason, looking into number two, you're going into the second week, I should say. And uh, yeah, if you're a Redskins fan, yeah, to me, you, know, you start wondering: are, are we, are we doomed? Are we fighting behind the eight ball already? I, I don't know. Uh, this week, the Redskins will be hosting the New York Jets, the New York Football Jets. Uh, these two teams got into a quite a little melee the other week during the joint practice. I, 
Why are teams having joint practices? I, 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 I to me, I don't get. It. I, I guess I, I should say I get it. You know, both of you are in town. It's nice to hit somebody that's not your own teammates. But these things, they always turn into some sort of big brawls, big melees. To me, it's 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 just not worth it. But this week, the like I said, the Jets are coming to town. Uh, the Redskins have got a got a chance to uh, one of these guys. Hopefully, has got a chance to to take the reins and jump in and fill that hole that's left by Geis. Uh, but again, like I said, very disappointing. The Dolphins they're at Carolina. Uh, Cam Newton. Uh, there's no former wide receiver for him to go and argue with at midfield before this one. So the Panthers, um, they get a win against Buffalo last uh, last week. Uh, but, you know, I, wins and losses in preseason games don't matter. If I'm the Panthers, uh, you know, they're looking to uh, develop some depth on that defense. I, I, Dante Jackson, uh, as we expected provided them a nice uh, a nice uh, piece at the other cornerback spot uh, but behind Jackson and that nickel and those dime packages who's going to step up and, and and be a part of that offensively um, you know DJ Moore you know, uh, can he continue to uh, burst out and have another good week uh, Curtis Samuel Maybe he'll get some touches. Cam Newton should get a a little more playing time this week. So for the Panthers, uh, you know, like I said, hopefully they'll be able to uh, be able to to do that and develop some of those young guys. And uh, the linebacking core, Thomas Davis, out for four games. So hopefully, uh, you know, someone can step up for those guys and uh, fill those shoes left by left by Thomas Davis those first couple weeks. And finally, Saturday night, the Bengals. We'll be at Dallas taking on the Cowboys. The Cowboys lose to uh, San Francisco in their first uh, first preseason matchup. But again, wins and losses don't matter. What's more important uh, for the Cowboys, the biggest question mark all offseason is who's going to step up at wide receiver, Michael Gallup, Lance Lenore each with nice games. Gallup with a nice uh, touchdown catch from Dak Prescott. Uh Linebacker, you know, the defensively, uh, Jalen Smith is is going to get some more playing time. Uh, we're really interested to see how he does. First round pick, Leighton Vander Esch, is uh, charging strong. He's he's making a play to become that starting middle linebacker. So uh, that's a battle that'll be interesting to see. Uh, but I, I, I guess my question is: Are we going to see uh, Ezekiel Elliott this week? Uh, you see Ben Roethlisberger. Uh, just went down with a concussion in Pittsburgh the other week. Why he's in there during a practice, that situation, I don't know. Question is, Elliot going to play this week? I say no. No. Do not play. Ezekiel Elliott should not play a single minute of preseason football. Not a single minute. Uh, Rod Smith behind him. Uh should get as many reps as he can. And also Bo Scar too. Uh, Scarborough had 33 yards, nine carries, and a touchdown. Uh, the story on him is is, is if he's going to make the team with the addition of Tavon Austin, who's kind of a hybrid running back mix, Scarborough is going to make the team. It's going to be half it's going to have to be on on special teams. And he played a lot, so hopefully Scarborough can can uh Get a you know get a few more carries. I like to see him somewhere around that 12 to 13, 14 carry range because I'm really interested to see uh, what he could do, and I'm also interested to see Rico Gathers. Um, you know, last year Gathers kind of started off in the preseason uh, on fire, Got a couple touchdowns in the first few games. Last week, just one catch for nine yards. Look, you know, we're looking for a starting. Uh, starting tied in with the uh, retirement of Jason Witten. And if Rico Gathers wants that job, and he, he's been the guy that they drafted a few years ago. Of course, he never he didn't play football in college. He was a basketball player at Baylor. 
They drafted him. They kind of stashed him away. Now is his now it's his opportunity. He's he's been buried behind other veteran tight ends and Jason Witten. Now these guys are gone. The job is here. Can Rico Gathers jump up and take it? Literally jump up and take it. And, and finally, last two, uh, Michael Gallup. We talked about him. Uh, he had a big thirty-yard catch uh, from Dak Prescott for a touchdown. The wide receiving the wide receiving spot that room right now is pretty crowded. Uh, I think Gallup has has got an opportunity to separate himself a little bit from some of those guys. And you're hearing the rumor maybe they're not all going to make it. Terrence Williams. <coughs> uh, but then not all these guys are going to make it. So I think Gallup is a guy who, who uh, has a big, big opportunity. And, and lastly, uh, Cooper Rush. Uh, he Rush is a guy who reminds me kind of in the way they've handled him and the way he's come along. He kind of reminds me of the way they brought Tony Romo along early on. You know, he was, you know, Romo was kind of, you know, the guy from a small school, got some preseason action every year, got to the point where other teams were calling the Cowboys about trading for Romo when they had, uh, you know, Quincy Carter and then Drew Bledsoe. And Bill Parcells is, you know, kind of always blew it off and brushed it off. Well, Russ is the same way. They, they kind of stashed him on the practice squad after a nice preseason last year. I think he goes 15 for 23. A buck forty-five and a touchdown. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, most importantly, no interceptions. And so, with that year of experience, uh, he's, he's got the inside track to be the backup quarterback. Uh, I love to see it. I love the kid. I, I think he'll. I think that he he will. Uh, he'll do a great job. I think he's a more than capable backup. And to me, it's a it's a nice change from having the. Maybe you know the 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 washed up, overrated veteran guy you know we had with Matt Castle. Look, I, let Cooper Rush come in. Let the young guy have his crack because if everything goes according to plan, the offensive line stays healthy. Uh, he'll never see a snap anyway. I love the kid. I love what he brings. I love watching him. I hope we can keep him, but I hope he never plays because <laughs> I hope Dak Prescott. Takes that job and has a monster, monster year with it, uh, which I kind of think we will. Um, coming up in the next couple weeks, hopefully, uh, we, you know, we can lure BG back into the studio and get him back with us. Uh, we will, uh, we'll get you guys called back up on our uh, NFL division predictions. Can't really do that alone, so uh, hopefully he'll be back next week. We'll get caught up with that. I will also make some college football predictions. We'll let you know, uh, you know, we'll let you know how we think the ACC and the SEC stack up, and uh, maybe give you a Heisman, uh, a Heisman pick or two. Uh, so we'll see. Like I said, we'll get BG back. We'll do do all that next week. Uh, like I said, we want to thank you for for staying with us. We're sorry we missed last week, uh, but we're back. We didn't go anywhere. So have no fear. I want to remind you to head over to stadiumscene.tv. Go check out some more, you know, some more great podcasts. Listen to this one, download all these, and go over there, check those guys out. They've got a lot of a lot of cool stuff, a lot of great podcasts. I want to remind you to like us and share us on Facebook. Tell your friends, tell your family. It's not just for sharing pictures of your kids, it's also for getting the word uh, uh, about the border war, about BG and I out. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Border War. I'm at Tanman three two six four. You can hit up BG at BG underscore Border War and ask him where the heck he's been. Email the show at Carolina or Car- email the show Carolina Border War at gmail dot com. Uh, and make sure you go and subscribe to us through Spreaker, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Tune in. Like I said last week, whatever your digital media platform preference is. We are there. Just go search for the Border War Podcast. The Border War Podcast. We're there. Uh, help us fight the crumminess that is the, our local sports talk radio guy. Because come on. Come on, guys. We cannot be the only one that locally have that guy. Air quote. 
Help us fight the crumminess. Please.